This is Dr. Shannon Wong from Austin, Texas. I'm going to describe this case of treatment of a crystalline Z syndrome. The patient has a uh, induced refraction where she has a refraction of minus one plus two at 180 yielding a vision of 2040. And the patient uh, is about one month post-op after receiving a crystalline's AO. And you can see in these slit lamp images the tilt of the lens where the uh, left side of the lens is bowed posteriorly and the right side of the lens is vaulted anteriorly. There is... Uh, a choice that we made not to yag this patient but rather take the patient to the operating room to try to reposition the lens. So the first thing we do is we inflate the eye with Helon GV viscoelastic and we re-expand the capsular bag. The top portion of the screen shows the nasal haptic and the bottom portion of the screen shows the temporal haptic. Once we've vaulted the lens more anteriorly on the, nasal, on the top, uh, top screen, we discover that the haptic is fibrosed at the equator of the bag. We attempt to liberate the adhesion that has formed around the haptic but are unable to do so safely. It was felt that trying to separate this adhesion would likely cause a break in the capsular bag. So we free up the haptic that is not fibrosed into the capsule. and discover that we still cannot liberate this end of the lens implant. We then introduce MST micro scissors and decide to amputate this haptic as we cannot remove it in a safe manner. We then try and free up the opposite haptic and find that it too is fibrosed into the equator of the capsular bag. So we elect to amputate that haptic as well. We're using micro forceps and micro scissors made by MST Microsurgical. We've placed a generous amount of viscoelastic behind the IOL optic to uh, move the capsular, posterior capsule as far away from the uh, area of interest in order to prevent inadvertent perforation of the posterior capsule. In order to, our plan is to place another crystal lens positioned 90 degrees away from the original crystal lens. And in order to prevent a, a 
repeat Z syndrome, we elect to place a capsular tension ring to expand the capsular bag and prevent it from contracting in an abnormal way. We then reinsert a new crystal lens of the same dioptric power As there has been an anterior capsule extension that you can see at 12 o'clock, we're careful to very slowly and gently insert the second crystal lens in a way to not inadvertently extend the anterior capsule defect at 12 o'clock. Once the lens has been positioned, we then find it uh, find that one of the haptics is now uh, subluxing into the anterior chamber, so we amputate this haptic, but leave the fibrosed segment in the capsular bag. So we then make sure that the lens is vaulted posteriorly. As we reinflate the eye, we see that the right-sided haptic uh, positions itself nicely. It moves posteriorly, and we have eliminated this patient's Z syndrome. We make sure there is a watertight seal to the eye. We double check and triple check the position of this lens to make sure it is planar and not in a Z configuration and it is confirmed to be in a planar position at the conclusion of surgery. We leave one of the haptics in place at the conclusion of the case. This is the patient's eye five days postoperatively. You can see there is no longer a Z syndrome the lens is in a planar configuration. The patient's refraction is now best corrected to 2020, whereas beforehand it was best corrected to 2040 with two doctors of cylinder. All that cylinder has been eliminated simply by repositioning the lens. Thank you for your time and attention.